Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim is a vast game that's a part of an even vaster Elder Scrolls universe, which contains multiple more games and even a few books. So in such an expansive environment and world, Skyrim is bound to contain at least a few events or scenes that don't always add up or make the most sense. Just the nature of the game. Well, that's exactly what we're going to be diving in today. Sit back and relax as we explore five more Skyrim mysteries. Part 4-ish. Starting off, the Ethereum Forge was a legendary ancient dwarven metal-luring site that was once used to forge tools out of Ethereum, a strange blue rock with magical properties that even modern scholars fail to completely understand and use. Well, evidently, nearly 4,000 years ago, the dwarves were able to harness it and build some of the most powerful devices of their time. However, eventually, the dwarven city-states got greedy and began to go to war with each other, each hoping to claim the forge for themselves. Eventually, the war came to a conclusion, but it was under rather uncertain circumstances. And many years later, the dwarves disappeared altogether anyway, which is, in and of itself, a mystery deserving of its own video. During the quest, Lost to the Ages, the Dragonborn assists the restless ghost of a long-dead Nordic researcher named Katria in order to fulfill her lifelong quest of locating the forge, so her spirit can finally rest easy. Once completed as a reward, you'll earn your choice of one of three pieces of powerful Ethereum equipment. Well, during your visit to the Ethereum Forge, and the Dwarven Ruins it's contained in, the Dragonborn can find a few things that are quite interesting to say the least. In the lake surrounding the burning flames, underneath the water, lies a long-gone skeleton, clutching a Dwarven sword next to a soul gem. As you learn during the quest, nobody's ventured into these depths since the Dwemer still walked the Earth, so these are almost certainly the bones of a specimen of that long-gone race. How this individual died and when is anybody's guess, and I suppose is another mystery. But there's more. All over this location are more soul gems, and not too far away, in a separate body of water, is another skeleton. This one clutching onto an elven weapon suggesting this could be the remains of a snow elf. We do know long ago the snow elves agreed to be blinded and pretty much enslaved by the dwarves in order to avoid their own extinction at the hands of the Nords, and many generations later decided to revolt against those very same Dwemer. Perhaps these two skeletons belong to victims of that revolutionary conflict on separate sides. But even that explanation still leaves so much unknown. For one, what's up with these soul gems anyway? Were the dwarves attempting to soul trap their enemies? Furthermore, it wasn't really the snow elves that revolted, but instead the Falmer, which were technically just mutated snow elves, though after thousands of years are practically their own species at this point, and the Falmer would have certainly been using a Falmer, not elven weapon. On top of that, by the time the Falmer did rebel, according to our sources, the Ethereum Forge had already been entirely abandoned and its location lost to the dwarves anyway. So whatever happened here is a question only the ghosts can really answer. Next on our list, just north of Rorikstead lies an unmarked shrine of Akatosh. Now, these in it of themselves aren't particularly significant. Hidden shrines are actually quite common all across Skyrim. However, what makes this location so significant is that below the shrine, alongside a copy of the book Kolb and the Dragon, a choose-your-own-adventure title, as well as a blue dart wing, is a small set of dragon scales. Now, much like the shrine itself, at first this may not seem like a big deal. Akatosh is often referred to as the father of all dragons, so dragon-related offerings make a lot of sense. Until you realize that the dragons haven't walked the Earth in literal thousands of years before the events of Skyrim. And even then, it appears Alduin's attack on Helgen at the beginning of the game was very much their first open appearance since then. So the question is, how exactly did these dragon scales get here? This shrine of Akatosh is actually the only location in the entire game that radiantly spawns this item. The only other way to acquire dragon scales is by looting the corpses of slain dragon, suggesting that even if there was a feasible way for someone to acquire dragon scales at this time, which there isn't, they would have to be of extraordinary value, and wasting them at a shrine as an offering simply doesn't make much economic sense. Now, we do know that Parthenax, for instance, was able to survive for the past few thousand years in seclusion, 
So maybe it's possible he could have stopped by and done this? Though surely that would have raised some eyebrows per Rorikstead's villagers. In reality, I think this is most likely the result of some oversight by a level designer at Bethesda. But that's no fun, so I'm not gonna stop guessing. And neither should you. What's your theory? For third spot, speaking of the Dovas, did you know that Daedric Armor actually carries heavy dragon-related symbols and motifs for seemingly no discernible reason? Daedric Helmets have obvious dragon-like horns, but more notably, Daedric Shields heavily resemble folded dragon wings. It's worth pointing out that Skyrim isn't the first game for Daedric equipment and armor to make an appearance. In the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, Daedric armor was very much an acquirable thing. And while its helmet did boast horns, they didn't resemble those of Skyrim's, nor was the shield made to resemble a folded dragon wing. Morrowind also featured Daedric armor, though it was somewhat similar to design as seen in Oblivion, so Skyrim's really the first game to do this. At first, it's easy to look at the design and simply interpret it as Bethesda making little more than an art decision. I mean, the armor does look pretty cool, but there are also other strange connections between Daedra and dragons that are a little bit harder to ignore. For instance, the tomb of Jurgen Windcaller, founder of the Greybeards and former BFF to Parthernax, has an inscription written in Daedric writing on it. Whatever these connections could mean, however, well, really, that's anybody's guess, and yours is as good as mine. Coming at number 4, we have another mystery in which the Daedra are concerned. However, this one's more humorous and fun than any other on this list in my opinion. And that is, how did Helga get her Daedric boots? You see, Helga is the owner and proprietor of Helga's Bunkhouse, a popular inn and tavern in the Rift. Through some detective work, the Dragonborn can discover that she's also an avid practitioner of what she calls the Debellan Arts. Debella is of course the goddess of love. In her bedroom, she has a variety of what we're going to call, quote, tools used for inappropriate to describe purposes, because I'd like this video to remain monetized. These include leather straps, cuffs on her bed, entire volumes of the lusty Argonian maid, and a plethora of potions and more. She's definitely a bit promiscuous. Well, on her counter in front of the bunkhouse, the player can find a letter addressed to her from someone she's clearly shared such an experience with. Who the author of this note is, is yet another mystery. But it's titled, Until Next Time. And thanks Helga for what the author calls, quote, the most wonderful night of my life. However, in the letter, one line has captured many a player's eye. The author at one point writes, quote, Who knew that someone could manipulate the body in such a way while wearing Daedric armor boots? End quote. Now, the big thing, of course, to note here is that Daedric armor is incredibly difficult to acquire. There are no known blacksmiths in all of Skyrim that have really gotten it figured out, and it requires special conditions too. For instance, you can only forge it under a blood moon. And while doing so, it's necessary to throw in such rare ingredients as Daedric hearts and whatnot. For obvious reasons, it's very questionable how someone like Helga was able to obtain this. Now, the folks over on Reddit have been so kind to propose their own explanation regarding this matter, and I personally choose to subscribe to it myself. And that is, simply put, perhaps Helga was engaging in relations with one of the Daedric gods. That seems to be the only possible explanation other than Bethesda's developers just being a little bit funny. Which, admittedly, they probably were. But still, it's quite humorous to imagine someone like Debella engaging with such relations with someone like Shiagorath or Sanguine. It paints an interesting picture. Well, not literally, because I would get this video demonetized, but you get the idea. But, if you're ever looking for someone like a merchant in the streets and a daedra in the sheets, Elk is as close as you're gonna get. And finally, last on our list, we have a mystery that's not exactly new to anyone watching this video, but it's time I include it in this series. And that is, what caused Winterhold's Great Collapse, and how exactly did the college weather it? Winterhold, during the events of Skyrim, is a city in decline. A small population and considerable portion of the settlement being entirely abandoned makes that point clear. But it wasn't always this way. Before 122 of the Fourth Era, Winterhold was a booming and wealthy city, rich in both population and coin. But at some point during that fateful year, nearly the entire northern half of the settlement was swept into the sea. But somehow, the College of Winterhold was left entirely preserved. To the disappointment of many, we never really learned what's responsible for these events. 
We're introduced to a variety of theories. Many of Winterhold's locals blame the mages at the college themselves, which does make some sense considering the college was the only structure left intact. Some of the mages at the college blame it on the eruption of the Red Mountain and far-reaching geological consequences. Though it's worth noting the Red Mountain erupted 80 years prior to the collapse, so that theory doesn't seem to have too much weight. Well, some players have developed suspicions of their own, and many believe that we were actually meant to find out why Winterhold collapsed through a now major cut plotline in the College of Winterhold's quest line. You see, early in the college's story arc, the player is confronted by aberrations of members of an organization known as the Sigic Order. They claim that your actions have triggered a chain of events that can now not be stopped, but you can avoid negative judgment if you do as they say. The big thing is, it's never really specified what that chain of events you caused actually was and many believe the Sigics were in fact referring to the Great Collapse itself. The reason is that much of the College questline deals with an ancient and extremely powerful artifact known as the Eye of Magnus, which you discover shortly after meeting the Sigics for the first time. The game doesn't elaborate too much on what this Eye actually does, or how powerful it truly is. We're given a couple of glimpses, and Akano attempts to harness it for himself, though we all know how that ultimately ends. But it's not entirely too difficult to imagine that this Eye could have applications related to time travel as well. And many theorize that perhaps through this Eye, the Dragonborn was originally supposed to be the cause for the Great Collapse so many years ago. It certainly would have been a very intriguing story to pursue. Whether or not that was truly Bethesda's original intention is something only they themselves could tell you. So only Bethesda knows, and Bethesda, well, they're not talking. But with that, we're going to wrap up. Five more mysteries in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Which of the ones featured on this list did you find to be the most intriguing? What are your own theories and possible explanations for some of what we featured? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Shout out to Patreons Belkreed and Little Schmoplet for helping me not starve to death. And I hope to catch every one of you in my next video. Peace out, everybody.